guys. So obviously this is Ben. We appreciate him okay, being today, here today. So make sure you guys ask his questions. He's given up his time to be with us here today. Uh, so we need to be cognizant of that. Um, with being that, with that being said, I'll hand the floor over to him. Yes, thank you very much, uh, PJ. Um, I I talked to him a little bit ago. We actually jumped on a Zoom call, what last week or two weeks ago, and so he said that he was in this class, and I was in this exact class with Mrs. Lindgren, and it was a great experience. Probably my favorite class I took out of, I would say, every class I've been in, including college, because it's focused on actually doing and not talking about doing. So um, very good class. Um, so if I can provide even a little bit of value to you guys today as someone who was here a few years ago in this room and is currently on the grind, like trying to figure things out, trying to learn. I don't have it figured out, but I've learned some stuff and I've made a lot of mistakes that if you guys can learn from, could help you guys out as well. So um, again, my name is Ben Wigman. Um, I went all four years here, went to the University of Louisville, uh, played baseball here and at Louisville um, and recently stopped playing baseball to fully pursue business. Uh, so that's a little bit of a, some background information. How it all started. So don't, oh, I can't even look at the logo because it's, it's not a great logo. But you got to start somewhere. Phone Viking. Phone Viking, I remember sophomore year, I um, at the time was seeing this drop shipping business model where you essentially work with suppliers. They give you the product. You market the product. So I was getting these phone cases where they would do the shipping for me and everything. Maybe five, six dollars. I would sell them for twenty. Make the difference. It's an easy business model to start because you don't need any money for inventory. You just have to learn how to market. Um, so that didn't work. <laughs> Next product, the Pup Shack. It's I know it's an amazing name. Um, so this was shortly after the phone cases. I would sell a couple of them. I tried doing this, and I would sell like you see right there. This is an ad I created. I mean, you could go on Canva now and probably accidentally make something way better than this, but. That's what I did, that's what I was running ads to and getting, surprisingly, some sales from. I was selling these dog clothes um, and I, yeah, so I got my first sale from it. And I was like, oh my gosh, okay, here we go. I'm, I'm you know, I'm grinding, it's working. Um, ended up not working, so I was like, all right, I'm dealing with low ticket. It was hard because I was spending, you know, lots of money but not getting much in return, so I tried going a little bit higher ticket. This was like a two, brush mouthpiece you put it in and it's like supposed to brush your teeth for you it's kind of cool but that didn't work great but I still got some orders so I was learning the basic principle of regardless of the product I was learning how to bring sales in my margins weren't great um, and that was through Facebook ads and social media next one color cases uh, kind of cool it's like a Nintendo thing a phone case you can put on tried selling that that didn't work great on to the next one. Oh, I gotta do a lifestyle brand. I gotta look, act cool, like, ooh, look at me. So I would order stuff, I'd wrap it, I would give the clothes to my friends and family, have everyone post it. I actually still kinda like that logo because it's pretty simple and clean. That didn't work. Love charms. So I made lots of mistakes running ads until it started going in my direction a little bit. Love charms, it's like, oh, it's just a little keychain. Well, it's a little keychain that kinda popped off a little bit around Valentine's Day. So I was running these ads and I was selling these keychains, I was getting them for three or four dollars. It was custom in the sense that you go to the website, you pick your anniversary date, put a heart around it, boom. And again, I was kind of like the middleman. This was the drop shipping business model. Um, and so I was just the marketer. So I would run ads to this. And I remember like the first morning my ad ever took off. I was like three in the morning, there's an order, four in the morning, there's an order, five in the morning, seven, all the way through. And it was just like, all right, this is new. And I didn't really know how to um, handle that because the, obviously in order to scale, you have to spend a little bit more money on the ads to increase the revenue and then you're juggling profit margins. So I was trying to figure that out. So I was approached by a business partner. I'll actually share that in the next slide, but you can see some of the results. So I did like 35 orders in a day. That ended up being like almost a $3,000 a $3, week. Partnered with a business guy, a business guy who was really good at the dropshipping model. And I said, I just need to learn, like I'll sacrifice some profit margins to learn how to scale. Cause I was getting a little freaked out at this point. Um, Cause as I was trying to increase my ad spend, my profit margins were going down. I was starting to like break even. And so I'm like, all right, this is scary. So I offered the guy like 50% of profit margins. We just split whatever the profit is, we'd split it 50, 50. Um, and he already was able to walk in for you know no money, walk in just so I, he could show me. So I'm like, I gotta give him enough piece of the pie so it's worth his time. 
And then within like a week later, he scaled it um, and he showed me like the ropes and we, we did like a 2K day and then almost like a $20,000 or yeah, $20,000 a week um, with 18, 813 of these little tiny keychains. While I was like walking around Carmel, going to baseball practice, trying to figure stuff out. Um, and so that was really cool. So then it got so good to the point where I'm like, all right, my brand and everything was really baseball focused, but I'm super passionate. Like things are starting to go my way in business. So I started posting um, some of my results. I tried branding myself as, you know, someone who's also doing business. And so eventually I would have people reach out because they're like, how are you doing this? So I would have 16 year olds reach out and I would have 45 year olds reach out that are working their jobs and like, I want a side hustle. Can you show me this? And so the guy who I partnered with on the store, he would actually make videos on YouTube on how to, you know, do this drop shipping business model, essentially just how to run this and scale properly. So we partnered and I was really good at finding products that were working and that were selling and making the websites and he was good at teaching people how to do it. So we partnered together and we would make these pre-built stores where we would sell the winning products. So if you, if you paid for it, you would get a winning product or something that we're selling right now that we know works with the website and tutorials on how to scale them with the Facebook ads. So I sold that for a while and that went really, really good until I had more opportunity, more people reaching out. So when you have something desirable, you will be approached. And here I am. I'm like, you know, and I've fallen for like courses that I signed up for that didn't work. And I'm, I'm, you know, clicking links, trying to figure out what I can do because I'm having so much happen at once. End up partnering with this guy, working with him. His name is Kai Barber. If you see this, I'm still, you know, I still got beef with you because I haven't been able to figure this whole case out. Um, I start working with him for like three months, and I would be on Zoom calls with him. Um, until like three in the morning and then would get ready to leave for school at six, go to car, like, you know, go to all my classes at Carmel, then go to baseball practice and go to my workout and then back to the zoom call. So I worked with this guy for a while. He was sending me big chunks of money back and forth. We were working together. So I trusted him. Like there was no, there was no problem. Um, you can actually play, oh, I'll, I can play right here. This is, this, I got the receipts, like I'm locked in. So I still, I just, he ended up, so he lives in Australia. And you'll see what happens later on. But you can see this is a video that he sent me. So I was like getting all excited. I'm like, okay, I'm making this money. I want cars. I want, you know, all this cool stuff that I was kind of, if I was, if everything went right, was going to be able to get. Um, so you'll see that in this video. Hi, bro. Just in the office. You have no idea how keen I am for this year. Um, I'm going to be flying over around two weeks. Um, I've just organized flights and everything like that. So it's going to be sick. Um, like I said, man, I am super excited to be able to come over and work with you guys and be able to build um, a business. So let's do it this year. Let's get you the car. Let's make you a million bucks before you're 20. Let's get it all done and let's start this year. So that's a video he sent me. And I know it sounds crazy, but if you actually saw like the behind the scenes of what we were doing, it, you know, it was almost like psychological warfare. Like we became really close friends and we, I, I trusted him with a lot of stuff. So I'm sitting at lunch at Carmel and I get this notification on my Instagram that that's his username. He, he changed it. You guys could go. It's gone. Everything's gone. Um, and that's why like all these numbers and everything, it's all canceled. That's why I didn't even blur it out. Um, so he sends me a GIF or a GIF or whatever you call it. I, don't, I still don't even know. And I'm like, that's weird. Then I, I open up the message and it's a skeleton waving by. And I'm like, I mean, that can't be. You know, he didn't have a sense of humor before. Like if he's going to start now, it's pretty weird to, you know, start off with this skeleton waving by. So my gut feeling, I'm like, I kind of feel my heart drop. I'm like, you've got to be kidding. So I immediately go right to my bank account and find that all of my money is completely gone to the point that my checking account was like negative $1,600. And this was like, I'm like 16 or 17. I didn't even know checking accounts could go that far negative. I thought once it's zero, they just decline. Like, so I'm like, what is going on? So I had to, I was freaking out. I remember I went to Miss Las Gonas and I said, like, here's the situation. I don't even know what to do. Like, I, do I call my parents? I, I got to call my parents, I guess. So I was in her office for like three hours, like telling my parents. And at the time, again, they're like, OK, our 16 year old son's doing all this, working with all these people. Not they weren't sketched out, but this is just not a unique situation for like a young kid. Um, and so I'm like, I was trying to prove that I'm mature and I can handle this and look what I got myself into. And so I was like, I don't want them to have to pay $1,600. And I was trying to prove that I could do it myself. So I ended up grinding out some websites and I made 1600 to get back to zero. You'll see like all this is a few days later, he sent a message, a huge apology message. He unblocked me 
and then sent this wire transformation saying that he's sending money back. And that's like 82,000 in, that's in Australian, I'm not sure what that is exactly in um, USD, but immediately sent another one of these, boom, buy, it was fake. Uh, so I was just like, I'm like, you gotta be kidding, because I was dealing with baseball. So for those of you that don't know, I went to Louisville to play baseball. I'm like, screw this, I thought I was good at this, but I got so much going on, so I'm going to just play baseball. I'm just gonna do baseball, I can figure out business later, but I also had like some success in it, so I was like, in the back of my mind, it was just tough. So I, I go to Louisville, uh, freshman, you can't see it now, but I have a huge scar on my elbow. Freshman year, uh, I pitched like the first game of the season, and boom, I felt something in my elbow, and it, I ended up being Tommy John surgery. So I was like, boom, one, pretty much one pitch, and I'm done for the whole year, and then when I come back, it's just I have some great, amazing outings, and I have some horrible outings, and it was very spotty. And so I remember just you know on the bus or at the airport sitting on my computer because in the meantime I would just work on my business. Uh, I would try to do business stuff. Again, I was only able to go home maybe a week and a half a year, maybe two weeks a year, and that's just for Christmas time um, to be with my family because when you're at you know like a school like this, you're pretty much owned, so you have no choice but to just you know all in baseball, especially when you're competing at this level, it's like there's no choice. And so for me, um, is just recently, I mean pretty recent, like this past year I was pitching for Louisville, but six months ago, maybe five and a half, probably six months, I decided to stop playing baseball because it just, I didn't love the idea of being an MLB pitcher enough or more than the idea of being a successful entrepreneur and businessman and be able to provide for my family. And, and so you, I didn't want to walk into pro ball going against guys that would you know, kill me for my spot. Knowing that in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, this business is what I'm really passionate about. So I ended up stopping about six months ago. Leads me to where I am today. So six months, again, six months ago, I started a company, maybe five months ago, called Wigs Marketing Solutions. Essentially, I took all of my experiences from running ads, creating websites, logos, branding, finding products, and I put it all into this one marketing agency. Um, and you'll see right here, with business strategy, that's probably the biggest money maker in my opinion because these are all the services that I offer. So you'll see right there, I got the videographer, I got the content creation, but you have to know what you're doing with all these pieces in order to help a business grow. Um, and so, you know, that is what I offer. And so for a business strategy could be, you know, like I sit down with a company and I figure out what they're doing right and then what they're doing wrong. And then I try to help bridge that gap with these services and marketing uh, to increase their revenue and help scale their company. So that being said, um, all of these lessons, the good and the bad, allowed me to create a successful, you know, a solid, you know, a six figure business in under, you know, in under five months. And this car is not a representation of success, but the car was a goal of mine that I had that I wasn't really able to achieve while playing baseball. And so that was like the first piece of success that I had felt from the business side to reward myself. So I think success is achieving your goals. So the car just happened to be a big goal of mine that I was able to get um, recently. And I would say I have accomplished maybe 1% of my entrepreneurial goals. I think that's the reason why I've been able to create this in the first place is no matter how much good or bad I've gotten, I've always had this mindset of like, I gotta, I gotta do more, I gotta do more. And I've posted videos in the past about like, I'll go to bed thinking I could have done more. And then I'll go to my Google calendar and realize, oh, okay, you did do a lot today. But that general mindset, that competitive mindset of I could be doing more has allowed me to kind of, you know, get in, in the position where I am now and put me in the position that I'm going to be in, you know, 10, 15, 20 years. Um, it's essentially like not having an off switch and you have to balance it in this day and age with the whole mental health. So like if you were to tell um, a person who's not an entrepreneur, oh, like I go to bed thinking I don't do enough they're probably gonna say, oh, well, that's concerning. Let's dive deeper, let's unpack this. Maybe there's some past trauma and you don't feel like you're good enough. And that's, I would argue that feeling is very productive and beneficial for me because again, I didn't, when I got the car, I didn't think, oh, when I get the car, then I'll be happy. That was, I just wanted the car and it was a goal. Um, but chasing after something is what makes me happy. And that's like kind of the typical mindset I see in most entrepreneurs is always trying to get more and it's not in the unhealthy mindset that you'll never be content with yourself and you'll always be you know, hard on yourself. Like I kind of separate my emotions from how I run my business, but I would argue setting goals and always chasing after something, you feel motivated, you feel better, you wait. I would, like I said, I was in high school, like 
would get like one or two hours of sleep sometimes, but I would wake up with more energy than most people I would walk around the halls because my phone was vibrating and it was a new sale, a new sale, a new sale. I'm like, I feel like I'm, you know, I'm living for something. It's extremely, uh, I'm extremely passionate about it. And so that's like one of the biggest takeaways. So that I will um, open up with questions. Like I said, I, uh, I was in this class. I remember, I remember the product I did. I remember, you know, what my brain was thinking of how, okay, do I need investors and, and so, I, I mean, I was in your shoes, and I would say I am still in your shoes. I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, I'm always trying to learn from other people. Uh, so, yeah, if you guys have any questions, just, just let me know. With all the different products that you've created, especially when you were our age, when it came to marketing, was there a specific method or continuous like, thing that came up that continued to like, attract people's attention? Yeah, for me, um, if I could answer that in one word, value. So products that don't necessarily like a clothing brand that doesn't really solve a problem doesn't have much value again my immediate marketing brain goes to well you have to have influencers and you know popular people wearing this because then it's like makes them feel cool that they're wearing the same thing as them so for me if I could find a product that solved a problem then that added value and if it was a problem that not I just thought it was a problem but that I talked to people and they're like this is a problem there's not a great solution for it or there is a solution but you can make a twist on that solution to make it a little bit more convenient and brand it that way that was the one thing that always stood out to me and you could have the, like you could be amazing at marketing but if your product doesn't have value you could be the best salesman but if you're selling something that doesn't provide provide value it doesn't you know you're not going to see a great return